second, I didn't switch something. There we go. I have to switch. So the reason that this is emulated is because playing this game on console is getting more and more difficult as technology advances. Um, because it requires, like, you can't, like, okay, first of all, it requires an actual, um, like, old TV, like, one of the older ones, because of the way that the Super Scope was designed, and that's one of the reasons that it's emulated, and it's normal percent, because that's the difficulty that's being played. Alright, so I'm gonna give you a countdown on the timer, and we'll start, so... Yeah, CRT, thank you. So, three, two, one, go. So, with normal difficulty, um, there's a lot of dialogue that has to be skipped. Um, and all of the difficulties, the AI on all of the bosses change. Just enough to where you have to learn each different one. If you want to learn the other difficulties. And this is the only one that I have practiced up, so... This game, uh, at least fighting Garum here, will show off an interesting little trick that will be used later on in the run for optimization purposes. You can blow off different parts of the giant mechs as you go through the game. And I've got to count here just a second. One, two. And that's the quick kill strat. So what I did there was I waited until I had one shot left to blow his legs off. And then I threw a bomb, and for some reason the game doesn't know what to do at that point, so it doubles the damage of the body part being blown off instead of taking the damage of the bomb. And blowing Baram, uh, blowing Garam's legs off at that point kills him. So it doesn't actually blow his legs off because he just hits zero health. Uh, this is this game has a lot of RNG just based on the movement of the opponents. So like this guy here, Scarab, he's kind of floaty. And he likes to change directions a lot. But, and where he's heavily armored, the only thing you can do, really, is to just try and blow off whatever you can on his body to get some extra damage early on. Ah, I'm hitting the arm, whatever. And that's the ideal time to use a bomb. Just for the fact that, uh, yeah, see, he likes to change directions. And where he's so floaty, it's hard to get a lock on on him with the the visuals. And see what he's doing? He's just being a troll right now. Oh, I nailed it. Oh, I nailed him as he was going off screen. Got him. All right. So that was actually a really slow scarab kill because he didn't want to cooperate and stay on screen. And that's what I mean by there's some RNG in this game. He can just refuse to stay on screen and it just it adds so much time. It just slowly eats away. But this is uh, this game is known as Space Bazooka in Japan. Just a little bit of info. Uh, the Super Scope did not do well in Japan as it did as well in the U.S. And this game got a U.S. exclusive sequel. So, that's uh, another pretty neat tidbit. Now, here is an interesting fight for the fact you want to blow a leg off. And get him... Well, he is not cooperating. I am not getting quick kill strat with this fight. There we go. Why are you so jumpy? I just blew the arm off. Okay. You have never jumped this much. I am missing now. There we go. And this should be a kill right here. Nope. This is the worst Lorca fight I have had in a long time. The quick kill strat is to shoot a leg off and try to keep the leg from reattaching. And he just kept jumping everywhere and I just I couldn't get anything to work. That's okay. Um, so the story of this is that you have to stop uh, Thanatos' six chiefs and his two personal bodyguards. The world's been plunged into chaos where people ride around in giant mechs and have fights basically for dominance. So, 
And uh, Thanatos killed the main character, Mike Anderson's father, when he opposed him. So, Artemis here, uh, her weakness is trying to hit the missile uh, backpack on her back. Because blowing that off deals so much damage. But the problem is that you're fighting a vertical fight down the side of the Andes Mountains. So, movement is incredibly sporadic and random. And I can't hit that thing for the life of me. One more. Oh, well, we'll just do that then. Not the quickest of kills. Average on her, on her is about 28 to 25, 25, 28 seconds. And uh, she takes note of your generosity and your kindness after you beat her. She'll come into play later. Her name was Tasha. So here is the first fight that doesn't really have an effective quick kill strat at all. And he's got some pretty radical RNG. Because he likes to shift directions. and So he's got these three orbs that circle the top of his head. And depending on how you play this fight will depend on if those come into play. And they um, can be pretty uh, painful. If you don't play this fight a specific way, those orbs will uh, actually make him invulnerable. And then you just have to wait and die. Let's go ahead and throw the bomb out. I am getting... This is the most... That's the most godlike Schneider fight I've ever had. That is... That is the fastest Schneider kill I think I've ever had. Normally that fight takes around 45 to 50 seconds. And that's that was a 30 second kill. Now we go from having some really bad RNG to having no RNG. As big as this guy looks, there's no RNG. It's a very dry cut method. And I might actually just... So the idea here is to fire a charge shot into the middle to make him open those bay doors and then shoot two charge shots into each cannon. And right about here, he will open it himself. So I think it's every fourth one. Oh, how did I miss that? And that's a kill. 30 seconds. That's that's about average. So, again, remember how I mentioned with Garum, if you throw a bomb at a specific point, like at different body parts or whatever, it will just do so much massive damage. What's happening here is that you're blowing all four cannons off twice. And blowing the four cannons off in the first place does like two-thirds of his health or something like that. So, when you throw the bomb and you destroy all four of them at the same time, it registers that damage twice. So, you essentially just straight up kill him. For as heavily armored as he is, there's no RNG in that fight whatsoever. It's all skill. This, however, is the epitome of RNG hell. You're fighting in the space elevator battle. This is the first of Thanatos' guardians. So, you're fighting in this space elevator. If you've ever played Street Fighter 2... Um, this guy is the equivalent of fighting Vega. He just jumps around everywhere, bounces off the walls, doesn't have a single care in the world, has lots of clones and decoys that he likes to throw out. But if you can get the cannons off his back, that's pretty significant, because then he can't take cheap shots at you. Wait for it? Okay. I just didn't want to take the extra damage if I didn't need to. I wonder if I can get his arm off. Yep. Alright, we are about to kill him. And, yeah, he's down. So, he is... Probably the longest fight in this game, depending on how he wants to cooperate. 
I don't really have an average time for him because the fight varies that much. It can be as fast as 40 something, like low 40s, to all the way up to a minute and 10 or longer. Just depending on how much he wants to bounce off the walls, how much he wants to... Um, just anything he wants to do, it can be pretty problematic. Or how many decoys he wants to throw out, like bouncing around and stuff like that. Here is his brother tank. Uh, this is Baron. He has a shield. And the trick here is to try and get uh, his gun blown off of him. Or blow the hand off. Both of them work. Which will make him mad. He'll throw his shield and then it's a free-for-all to try and get him down as fast as possible. I might get the hand. Alright, I got the whole hand there. That's pretty good damage. And I'm probably going to bomb him after this one. There we go. And he's down. That's a pretty quick kill for Baron. Um, I think the quickest kill I've had on him is 28 seconds. And that was just... That was a perfect run against him when I got 28, so... We're coming up on the final boss. Um, oh, and I forgot to explain. When you beat Ivan, he gives you an item. It's the only item that you'll pick up on the normal route you know, without, you know, dying a lot or doing specific things. Um, it's called the V system, and you'll see it on the final boss. And uh, the V system essentially, it drains, I think it's 90% of your health gradually. But it makes you completely invulnerable to everything, and your power shots, your fully charged shots, are just ridiculously strong. They will pierce through pretty much most armor in the game. And he's just gonna do this. Can you not change a lot of directions? I don't know how that hit the leg. I'm pretty sure I had a dead shot on the body. No, there will be no charge attack from you, sir. Alright, so... He's not done yet. I mean, he doesn't look like he's really bad for wear until he starts blowing himself up. But it's not over yet. He's got one more trick up his sleeve. I bet you had no idea that we were secretly playing a Transformers game! Ah! But no, seriously. He's got this nice transformation. We go from like a mech game to a monster game out of nowhere that somehow also has mechs. It's wonderful. And he gets his full health back. Also, I forgot to mention during trying to explain all this, uh, Antonov and Eddie both come back. The pilots of the Ivan and the Valius, they come back and they, since they don't have tanks anymore, they basically refill your HP and I have to focus as this is a, uh, I can die here and it will lose a significant amount of time. Let's see. Where are you? What are you going? I botched that. I had the wrong weapon selected. I am totally choking. We're gonna do it right this time. Um, oh crap. I scrubbed this whole fight. I thought I had the V system selected at the beginning. And I didn't, so I didn't have a whole lot of health to actually work with it. So now I have to do this the slow, painful way. So much joke, whatever. Oh my god, I have no health left at all.
Now in time. I know that's not world record. Uh, the quick strat with him is you're supposed to select the V system and you're supposed to wait for him to open up the shoulder, like the big mouths or whatever, and then one fully charged shot takes each one of them out, and then you just destroy him from there, and I just, I thought I had the V system selected because I didn't use my bomb. But hey, I guess we got an epic kill because I had no health left whatsoever. So I guess it works out. I don't know how I was alive. I literally don't. I had no health left at all. Like, you could have sneezed and I would have died. But that's, that's Battle Clash. It goes through. It gives you all the times that you got through fighting the bosses. And, uh... Because it doesn't give you a total time, like an in-game time... The, uh, they have, we have to use, like, a real time. But it's normal percent because that's the difficulty you play on because there's four difficulties. Three of them are accessed with a code. And, like I said, emulated because it's hard to play, I mean, it's hard to play this on legit technology anymore because CRT monitors are just being phased out and the Super Scope is played with CRT. It's just the technology it was designed for. And there is even been like stories of delay between the super scope and uh, modern TVs so it makes it pretty unbearable to play but that's also why I've specified emulated because if you can and you want to speed run this on legit hardware go for it you would have you would be in like the just you know normal percent category but if you want to do this on an emulator you'd be like normal emulated percent that was the, ba the Battle Clash version of the Daigo. But that's that's the that's the game. Like I said, it had a sequel that came out only in the U.S. I haven't... I know how to do the run, but I haven't, like, learned it. So maybe I'll do that in the future. I've sunk so many hours into this series, though. It's so fun. I keep coming back to it. and That's, that's Battle Clash. I don't really have a whole lot else to add. Um, the credits after they play through will give you the code to unlock all the difficulties. So if you're like a first timer, beat the game, it'll give you the code to open up all the difficulties. And then it basically says, let the real battle begin. So I guess that's everything. I don't really have anything else I need to say. So, uh, thanks for watching this. And I uh, hope that it was entertaining, even though I totally choked the last boss. So, thanks everybody, <clears throat> and take care, I guess. And make sure you watch the rest of this marathon, because...